Lord Rawlings now made me like a liaison between Justice Annan and him, his office. So he asked me to go and discuss certain matters with Justice Annan at the where the MPs have their offices now. And then I'll convey whatever he wanted back to him. So I, one day I went there to see Justice Annan. He was on the fifth floor. And the, the uh, escalator was working. I mean, the lift was working. So I took the lift and went and discussed some matter with Justice Annan. And I was coming down. When the lift opened, I ordered the lift to fifth floor. And the lift opened. Lo and behold, the only person in that uh, lift was the chief justice then, Justice Sowa. Mm. Very humble man. He said, oh, he's a minister. How are you, sir? I said, oh, my lord. My lord chief justice, I'm, I'm, things are not good. He said, oh, why? I said, no, I want to leave this, this so-called revolution and do something else. He said, really? Are you serious? I said, yes, I am very serious. I mean... The thing, I don't see the, it anymore. I don't see the point. And I'm a young man. I don't want to waste my youth. So what do you want to do? I say, I want to be a lawyer. Really? Are you sure? I say, yes. He was stunned. He said, okay, if, if you are serious, find time and come to the office and we'll discuss. The following morning by 9 a.m., I was in his office. He said, oh, he's a minister. You are serious. I said, I'm very serious. I said, you are serious? I said, yes. So I said, I see that you are really serious. He rang the bell, and then his secretary came. Give me the, uh, the director of uh, legal training, uh, you know, then on, on legal phone. Training. Pardon? It was then called legal training or? Director of legal training. OK. Yes, the law school. OK. Yes. It was Justice Ofori Boatin, Ofori Boatin, who became a court of appeal judge. He has died. May he rest in peace. So he, they put him to for a board thing. He says, I have a minister here with me who insists that he wants to leave and come and study law. And I want you to see, I want to see whether you can do something about it. For a board thing said, oh, well, he should, let me, he should let me come to see him. And from the chief justice office, just down there is the law school. So I went down there. Before I think to said, ah, Mr. Ndebukri, are you serious? I said, ah, I am serious. If I weren't serious, I won't be pursued. So he too rang his bell, and the, the registrar of the school came. He said, well, the chief justice has just called me and sent this minister. So, but we have closed uh, taking applications. But because chief justice says we should consider him, give him a form and then he and, and register him for the exam. So they, I was given a form. I filled it there and gave it to them and left. They said I'll hear from them. I was there a few months later. Then uh, I got a letter that they were um, have to come to uh, some place. I think uh, the one that is now the City University, the yeah. city campus of University of Ghana. Enough, yeah. yeah, we met there to do the exam. We were about 200 and something to do the entrance exam. And they wanted eight. We were 200 and something. They wanted eight. Just eight students? Yes, that's how it has been. You people are complaining now that they, that is how it has been. The law course is not for mass production. <laughs> so, eight. They wanted eight. They wanted seven, actually. So I went and did the exam. Happened to be the first. And they arranged. Those days, no seeing people and so No, no, no. They marked the papers and arranged us first to 250, eight, let's say. And then they drew a red line after seven. And you were first? I was first. So and pasted the thing on the notice board. It's not that you go and be secretly doing anything. So I was there again when they sent me a letter that the results are out. I should come for interview. I gave the date. So I went for the interview. Again, <laughs> the people, the Oporo Boateng was chairing, the director himself, Professor Kumado, who became my friend, 
uh, Professor uh, uh, Achikote, who is now Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, there were, uh, I think there were three, plus the registrar. So they said, ah, you, you, you want to come block somebody's chance? I said, no, I'm coming to do the course. Because they, they said, you are, um, you are the number one to seven, you are number one, you are seven. You have to do the course, the, the three-year course in one year. So you go to classes with first year, second year, third year, and you write all the exams. Was it that because of your performance or...? No, the first seven, mm. we were to do that, not only I, okay, okay. the first seven. Then somebody came and uh, a lawyer came from Tamale and pleaded and they added his son. Mm. So we're eight. We're eight. Oh, these lights. We're eight. So we were to do the course. That's how come I am acquainted with all the so-called big men and women in Ghana now. Okay. Because those who were in first year... Somebody like uh, Pro, uh, Dr. Kumbo mm. was in second year. Somebody like Justice Poaman was in second year. Somebody like uh, um, Justice Derry, who had this problem with uh, Anas, yes. was in first year, and so on. Many of these ladies who are in Attorney General's department and who are doing gender advocacy and all, they were all in second year, you know, chasing me about because I was the only student with a car when I'm leaving the school they all run into the car so I I did the course and did very well in the exam so how many years did you one year I did the, uh, and, and the program that you're supposed to use three years three years so I did and then I was to go to I went to the law school at uh, Makola then in July 87 I was arrested. You had not completed your... I was first year in the law school. Part one, we used to call it. Mm -hmm. I had done the part one exam. So, and then I was there. And then I was arrested and detained, sent to various prisons for nine months. So my course was disrupted. And so... I, I, I was taken in July 87, and I was released in March, March 88. I went back to the school. Madame would bring me the notes from Justice Poamang and others, and I, would be, I was in the prison writing, taking the notes and copying to, so that if I was released, I would still try and do the exam. When I was released, I went to the school there, Director called me and said, "You are one of our best students. I don't want you to spoil your record. You go and force to do this exam. You may not do as well as we expect you to do. So you don't worry. God's time is the best. You will forgo this year, and then come and continue next year if nothing happens, so that your record will be clear." So I missed one year, and then I went back at the beginning of the following year. And then I finished in 89. And I was called. So did we did the years. exam two years. Okay. I, did, I, I did three years okay. because I missed one year. So, and then I was called to the bar in October 89, 1989. So I've been practicing the law for 31 years now. Have you lost a case before? Oh, I've lost a few cases. You can't always win. Then what was the Oh, let me see. Major one I lost that disturbed me. Some of them, you, they were not taken to the very end. Mm. For example, uh, Bokunaba uh, removed the chief of Tanga by a piece of paper mm. and said that he had assumed responsibility in the meantime. For the, and I said no. You, you can't do that. The chieftaincy position is not a civil service or public service position. It's a, it's a, it's a private, it's the courts have held that, mm. that the skin or stool is private property. Mm. It belongs to a family. Mm. And in Kosal, it is, it is like anything cooked. Mm. It is not like 
anything you can apply and go and just occupy. So even though you are the head chief, you are the paramount chief, you cannot be chief of Tanga. Okay. So when you write a letter that you have removed the chief and that you are now acting, you are, you, it, it, cannot be, it cannot be, because you can't be chief of Tanga, you can't be chief of Timonde, you can't be chief of Zebila, you can't be chief of Teshi, but you are the head chief. Yeah. That one, no problem. So I took it to court. Techn they used technicalities and drove us from court. You know, because you cannot go to the high court with a chieftaincy matter. Okay. So one has to use, you have to use other ways. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to the chieftaincy court. Mm -hmm. So I went, still yeah, use some, you see, uh, supervisory jurisdiction. And then the judge said that no. Because if, if the way, Bokunava says he's the one who made him chief. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he removed him. And I am saying that, Yes, it is rather the people, the kingmakers of Tanga, who selected him mm. and brought him to Bokunawa just to enskin him. So he did not have the authority to remove him without the consent, the of, consent the of the Tanga people. people. So if he was to go into that, he would be breaching the law because he is now delving into who is, who is qualified to make a chief and who is not qualified to make a chief. Yeah. So a, lot, a lot of people really like you. I mean, down south, down north, they talk about you and how you've practic you practiced the law for so many years. Sometimes they're wondering your understanding of the law and how you've been able to succeed or win certain cases in, in, in court. What, what do you think that is making people love you? I mean, when you speak on radio, talk about criminal issues, talk about uh, issues that concern the people. I mean, people admire and they always want to talk to you. What do you think could could make people, Ghanaians, like you so much? <laughs> That's an unfair question. You have to ask those people. <laughs> I don't know why people like me. I wouldn't know why people like me. But I suspect mm. to be a, to, to maybe...